Can a single image or idea cause so much anguish, so much mental despair, that you never recover and eventually take your own life? Paintings, sculptures, creepypastas, 4chan posts. This idea has haunted the human psyche since the inception of language and art. And in this video, we will explore examples throughout the internet and art history, and hopefully find out why we are so obsessed with the image or the idea that drives you mad. Subscribe to Art Chad to save yourself from madness, and subscribe Subscribe to my Patreon to inflict madness on others. Basically, we're talking about things that give their viewers PTSD. Things the viewer can never unsee or unthink, eventually driving them insane or to suicide. And look, it can't just be like gore or something like that, because that's way too easy. And besides, anyone over the age of 20 saw plenty of gore on the internet back in the mid-2000s. You know, you'd go to your friend's house who didn't have parents for some reason and watch gore videos with him while drinking a lukewarm glass of peach schnapps. Was that just me? Haunted images also don't count, because that's boring and subjective. Just like reality. Let's start our journey where all great journeys start. Obscure posts on the internet. I'm sure almost everybody watching this is familiar with creepypastas. Ben Drowned, Sonic.exe, Slenderman. Internet classics. Creepypastas work by employing the use of childhood nostalgia, classic horror, and the uncanny valley. Take for example the classic Squidward Suicide, a lost episode of Spongebob that appeared mysteriously on the desks of the editors. The story goes that the episode features Squidward getting violently booed off stage by everybody in Bikini Bottom. The scene then cuts to Squidward sitting on the end of his bed crying as the camera slowly pans in on his face. When the camera finally pans in, Squidward looks up to reveal him crying hyper-realistic tears of blood, and the sobbing slowly turns into screaming, with a voice yelling, do it. Squidward then grabs a shotgun from off frame and commits suicide. But it's not really what we're talking about, it's just a story. So let's look at the two most prevalent examples I can find of an image that drives you crazy. That being Smile.jpg and Momo. Smile.jpg, also known as Smile Dog, is this creepy Polaroid photo that features a Siberian Husky with human teeth and a hand reaching out from off frame. It first appeared on 4chan's paranormal board slash x in 2007. Now the trick with this image is it's not supposed to immediately scare you or invoke a reaction. The image itself isn't really that remarkable. The issue is you can't get the image out of your head once it's there. I like this because it's, it's an exact example of what I'm talking about. It's not supposed to be haunted, it's not supposed to be anything, it's just supposed to be that looking at this image will drive you crazy. You know, it's not like there's any substantiated cases of this actually happening, it's all just internet lore. But what about Momo? This image of a sculpture by Japanese artist K. Suki Eso caused such a panic that multiple police forces around the world issued warnings about the image. The story goes that a number would contact you on WhatsApp claiming to be Momo and encourage you to partake in increasingly dangerous challenges. Even like Kim Kardashian cared so much about this, she made an Instagram story trying to get YouTube's attention. There was an 11 year old boy in the Philippines who was found dead by drug overdose and it was ruled a suicide by the Filipino police. It's the myths and lore around it that make it actually creepy. See, the thing is, the issue with internet moral panics and creepypastas are twofold. The first issue is that we can speak anything into existence. This happens all the time. Look at the Tide Pod challenge or the Knockout challenge. Those things didn't exist. And cable TV news networks take a fake story and run with it because they're sensationalist and their boomer audience doesn't know any better. And next thing you know, every major news network is talking about the Tide Pod challenge, even though it never existed. And the second issue is that there's so much content on the internet that nothing is really surprising anymore. There's thousands of images in the vein of Smile Dog that are equally as creepy, if not more creepy. Like how f***ed up this one is. I looked at this for like 20 seconds when I saw it. This is terrifying. You're telling me this won't make me kill myself? Look at her. She's f***ed. We know the patterns or imagery that make something scary or uncanny. You know, maybe if a medieval peasant saw a smile dog, it would f*** him up. But what if you could distill these images down to a single idea? Rather than something that is disturbing because of its context or the lore surrounding it, it's just objectively disturbing. A thought you can't unthink. That is the goal of the despair code. Originally appearing on 4chan in the paranormal board, the despair code was in the bottom tier of a conspiracy theory iceberg chart. Some believe that it is literally a noise that drives you insane. I even found an archived 4chan thread of a user who claims to have discovered the noise by producing music and layering sounds over each other endlessly. Here's a little taste of what he came up with. <laughs> 
I know it sounds like it would be in an Alfred Hitchcock film or the build-up in a dubstep song. It's not what it sounds like that matters. It's the actual frequency it's relaying that matters. You know, just list keep listening to it. Tell me what happened. Someone go listen to this for like five minutes through their headphones. Tell me how you feel. There is also the belief that the despair code is an idea, a single idea, like something you could read that when you're finished reading it, you will be just in endless despair, like, like thinking the wrong thought. This is where it gets more subjective. Something that could make somebody upset could not have any effect on somebody else. I read a lot of despair codes on 4chan and Reddit of people trying to, you know, black pill their reader with uh, a phrase. So here's my own attempt at creating a despair code based on what I've read. You didn't exercise your free will by clicking on this video. Every moment in your entire life led you up to this very second where you're watching me on YouTube.com. Not just every moment in your life, every moment that has ever happened has led you to watching this video. If we turn back time to the Big Bang and let the universe play out again without changing anything, you would still be back at this exact moment watching me. If we restarted time 1,000 times, you would still end up back at this moment 1,000 times. If we created an AI that could analyze the correlation between between every moment in history, it could predict to the exact nanosecond that you clicked on this YouTube video. Following this logic, you have no agency over your own future. Where you will be 20 years from now is as set in stone as where you were 20 years ago. Everything will happen the way it is going to happen. Every decision you feel like you make is just a continuation of a process that started with the Big Bang. In this sense, you are like a character in a book. No matter how many times you read the book, the character has the same behavior, the same lines, and the same ending. The despair code isn't real, by the way. The user made it up because he wanted something really obscure in the bottom of the iceberg chart, and he thought like, oh, what better thing to do in the bottom of the iceberg chart than to literally just make something up on the spot? That's as obscure as it gets. And he admitted to this too in the 4chan post. But what's interesting is that people read the despair code and wanted to decipher it, wanted to figure out what that was. We really like this idea. We really like the idea of a cheat code that makes you kill yourself. I don't know why. You can even find this in art history. Let's look at some old paintings that had the same myth around it. Man proposes, God disposes. This is the name of this painting that sits in the exam hall at Royal Holloway University in London. The painting is ceremonially covered up during exams as a legend persists that gazing upon the painting during an exam will cause you to fail. However, this curse escalated in the 1960s when a student took his own life after gazing upon the painting. And as his final words hastily scribbled across the top of his exam paper, he wrote, the polar bears made me do it. Sadly for me and my case and the thesis of this video, there's no evidence that this happened at all. Uh, it's just, you know, fun university folklore. Okay, okay. But what about Ivan the Terrible and his son? A painting painted by Ilya Ripin between 1883 and 1885. Now this painting was vandalized in 1913 by Abraham Bolichov, a self-proclaimed iconoclast. I got a whole video where I talk about that. Go to this video and go to the Byzantine section. I give you a full breakdown of iconoclasm. And after learning about the painting's vandalism, the curator of the gallery threw himself under a train because he was so sad about it. Now this is a painting that caused his suicide, but not in the way Way I wanted it to. Why couldn't he have just looked at the painting and go, oh God, and shoot himself? Look at this. Look at this newspaper clipping of the painting all slashed up. Is that not f***ing terrifying? This image is scary. Look at the girl. Spooky girl from before. Newspaper clipping. Now that the spare code sound is playing. Look at these. Now take this all in. I'm going to let it play for like 10 seconds and just look at it. Yeah, now you're scared. Now you're and scared. But how about the Rokeby of Venus? Painted between 1647 and 1651 by none other than the best painter in Spain during the Spanish Golden Age, Diego Velázquez. The scene depicting the goddess Venus was inherited by the 13th Duchess of Elba and hung up in her home as part of her personal collection. Now this is all during the early 1700s and her friends and family claimed the painting haunted her because she was aging out of her youthful beauty and turning 40. And this painting was a stark reminder to her that she would never be 20 again. She was gonna die. She was gonna get old and die. We're all gonna get old and die. So rather than let nature take its course, she killed herself at the age of 40 because this painting made her do it. This painting made her kill herself. Just kidding. It didn't make her kill herself. That was a tale. She actually died of tuberculosis. But it'd be really interesting for me, for my case for this video, if she killed herself from looking at this painting, wouldn't that be interesting? Oh, okay. Look, I gotta be real with you. I wrote down the video title, Art That Makes You Kill Yourself. And I thought, what a great title for a YouTube video. 
I could make a whole video just to justify that title. There's despair codes, there's creepy pastas, there's old paintings, there's ancient sculptures of suicide, there's tons of suicide in art. There is not a single case in my way too much research that I could find of art that makes you kill yourself. What I did find is that this is a trope that appears again and again throughout history. It's a myth that goes back to the ancient Greeks of gazing upon something and never being the same again once you gaze upon it. And here I am making this video myself interested in this concept. So why are humans so interested in that idea? It's exhilarating to think that you could control someone's fate by simply showing them an image or showing them an idea. Or perhaps it's us parsing with the fact that we're just a system. We're an operation. Our thoughts, our feelings, our desires, hunger, tiredness, addiction, it's all just processes playing out inside the body. And we know this deep down, our life feels meaningful, our life feels unique, but we know we're all sort of the same thing. And perhaps at the end of the day, we find this comforting. It's comforting to think that we can be coded and that there's a realm beyond our understanding that can influence us. There's more than just this. There's more than just the tactile experience of being a human. There is another realm that can cause us to do things that we don't understand why we did them, or cause us to feel a way where we don't understand why we feel that way. Something psychedelic, something alien, something otherworldly. And the only way to find out if there will eventually be an image or an idea that will make you kill yourself is to not kill yourself before you figure it out. I am